Okay, so in this video, we'll do another example, and this is an optimization problem, but we're also given a constraint. Okay, and that's gonna change the way we, we solve this problem to start with, okay? So for this problem, we have a cylindrical cell. Okay, so not all cells are perfectly spherical. You know, some of them are disc-shaped, cylindrical shape, or, you know, like star-shaped, like an astrocyte or something, but uh, for this, we'll have a cylindrical cell, so it's gonna look something like this, right? So it's some, some sort of cylinder, okay? And the cylinder is gonna have side length L, and the radius is going to be R, okay? And so if we were to compute the surface area of the cell, right, would be uh, the basically what you do for a surface area of a cylinder is you have these two caps, right? two caps and I feel like that is hidden nope it's not hidden right so you have these two caps that go on top and bottom and then you unroll right so you would like take a paper towel roll or something you cut it down the side and then you could unroll it right so this is unrolled oops let me make that right here this is unrolled right and basically the the length of that would be L still, right? But then this long part here would be the, uh, uh, what is this called? The perimeter of that circle. So this would actually be width two pi r. Okay, so the surface area then ends up being uh, two pi r squared, right? So each has area pi r squared, right? Each little circular cap to my paper towel roll has area pi r squared. So we have two of them. And then we also have this rectangle area, right, which is two pi r times l, the length. Okay, so this would be the surface area of a cylinder. Okay, so the surface area of this is two pi r squared plus two pi r l. Okay, and its volume would be given by pi r squared l. And the way I think about this one is you have an disk of area pi r squared, and then you stack L of them to get pi r squared L, right? And that gives you the volume. Okay, so the optimization problem then here is uh, that you have a cell of fixed volume, a constant volume, right? So it's incompressible and it's not growing. It's fixed volume, let's call it K. And we want to optimize its surface area, right? So cell of fixed volume, K, and we want to minimize the surface area of the cell, okay? So the last problem we did was a maximization. This is a minimization, but they're both different types of optimization problems, okay? So the first step, we need to identify what we're optimizing, right? So the first step is to identify the optimization, All right? So here we want to minimize, right? Or find the minimum of S equals two pi R squared plus two pi R L, okay? But the problem here is what are we optimizing this? What, what are we finding the minimum with respect to, right? This is a function S of R and L, right? R and L. But we only know how to do these minimization problems or maximization problems when we only have one variable. So for a problem like this, where we now have two variables, right? How do we do that? Well, we look at our constraint. Right? Our constraint is that the volume is constant. So we have to take that into account to then change our optimization problem from op optimization problem with two variables to an optimization of one variable. Okay? So what we would do is we would use our constraint to you know, reduce the number of variables in this problem by one to reduce 
or get rid of a variable. Okay. So our constraint is that the volume is constant, right? So volume equals pi r squared L equals some constant K. Okay, so we maybe want to write L in terms of R or R in terms of L. Okay, let's solve for L since it's it'll be the easiest thing, right? So if I solve for L, I get L equals K over pi R squared. All right, so now I know that if I know the radius, I know the length because the volume is fixed, right? This says, know the radius, know the length, right? If I figure out what the radius is, I know what the length is because the volume is fixed, okay? So then I can change my surface area equation to only be in terms of R now, right? So then I go to my surface area, which is a function of r and l, right? Which was two pi r squared plus two pi r l, okay? And I will substitute in l equals this. So I'll have s of just r now is pi, two pi r squared plus two pi r k over pi r squared, right? I'm just putting in l equals k over pi r squared wherever I had an l before. Right, and then this simplifies to 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi, I guess the pi's cancel, we're left with 2 k, r cancels with r squared, so we did 2 k over r. Okay, pi cancels the pi, r cancels with one of the r's on the bottom there. Okay, so then now we have a function, s of r, right? So we want to minimize s of r with respect to r, the radius, to r, okay? So then uh, we want to find this minimum, okay? So let's look at, I guess this is step three now, find the minimum, okay? So let's look for critical points, so s prime of r, is equal to four pi r, right? That's just the power rule here. Two comes down, multiplies that two, and then reduce the power by one. This, I wanna think of that as like uh, two k r to the minus one. That would be the easiest way for me to do this. Now I just use power rule on that, so I get minus two k over r squared. Okay. So then from here, I want to solve for when this is equal to zero, right? So let's add this to the other side. So I get four pi r equals two k over r squared. And so right away, we can see that r can't be zero, right? If r is zero, then this would be zero equals infinity, right? It doesn't make sense anymore. We can't divide by zero. So r is not zero because r equals zero doesn't make sense in this situation. Which makes sense, right? If the volume is fixed at k and not zero, right? So k is not zero, would I guess be my my one my one qualifier is that this volume is some positive number. It doesn't make sense for it to have zero volume. Right? If you have zero radius, you automatically have zero volume, which doesn't make sense. Okay, so r is not zero for this problem. Okay, that's not a critical point here doesn't make sense given our constraint, having some fixed positive volume. Okay, so then we can divide by r or multiply through by r, right? So let's multiply through by r squared. I get four pi r cubed equals two k. Um, yep, so then let's solve for r, right? r cubed equals two k over four pi, right? which means that r is the cube root of k over two pi, okay? So then this is some number that depends on k. If we don't know what k is, we can't actually explicitly compute this number, right? But it depends on k, which makes sense, right? So if r is that, then we could also find l equals, remember that was pi r, no, what was l? 
L was K over pi R squared. Right, so now we know it would be at uh, K divided by pi, and then this would be to the two thirds power, right? So K over two pi to the two thirds power. Okay. So then we'd have K divided by K to the two thirds, right? Which means we would subtract the powers and we'd be left with K to the one third, right? We have pi divided by two thirds is again gonna be pi to the one third. Um, and then this would still be one over two thirds. So then this would come up here, two to the two thirds. Okay. So that would be what L would be, right? So it's also some strange number that depends on capital K, right? So let's check uh, whether this is a minimum, right? So this is our only, uh, this is our only um, root, right? This is our critical point of our function, right? So let's check the second derivative. Second derivative test to see if it's a maximum or a minimum, right? The second derivative test says, let's take that derivative. We get S double prime of R equals four pi now minus, or sorry, plus two times two K over R cubed. Right, so that's four pi plus four k over r cubed. And for r positive, right? So r is always positive because it's a radius. It's a physical, you know, distance measurement. Uh, so it's always a positive number. So this second derivative is always positive, right? We could check at r equals third root of k over two pi, right? S double prime of third root of k over two pi is equal to four pi plus four K R cubed basically just cancels this cube root out. We get K over two pi, right? So this gives us four pi plus four times two pi, right? Which is I believe four plus eight is 12 pi, which is positive. Right, so the second derivative test says that S of R is concave up at R equals third root of K over two pi. Okay, so because it's concave up, it looks like this. If this R equals root three over K, third root of K over two pi is where that tangent slope is zero, which means we're really at the bottom of this concave up well, which means we have a local min at r equals third root of k over two pi, okay? And because it's concave up for all r's, we know that this is indeed gonna be the minimum value, right? So then we know, okay, the uh, surface area is minimized, or s is minimized at radius, third root of k over two pi, length being uh, this other thing that was kind of confusing, but k to the one third times two to the two thirds divided by pi to the one third. I guess another way you could write this would be, if I make this two squared, it's four k over pi to the one third. I guess that's the cleaner way to write it. But in any case, it's some number that depends on K. All right, and that's where it's minimized and the, the actual value of the surface area would be then we plug in R and L into S to find that. Uh, but this question is not asking for us to actually find the minimum surface area, it's just finding the dimensions of this minimization. Okay, cool. So I hope, I hope these problems are not too complicated to follow. Basic process is uh, you're given some information. You're supposed to parse out this word problem to figure out what is the function that you're trying to find the maximum or minimum of. Are you trying to find a maximum or minimum? What is the variable that you're uh, taking that derivative with respect to? Right. If you have two variables, then you must have been given some information to cancel one of those variables out. So here we were given this constant volume constraint, which we were then able to 
rearrange so that we know uh, one of the variables in terms of the other, which we can then substitute this expression in, right? We substituted in this expression to solve, right? So we substituted in to our optimization function so that we are only having a function of one variable, which we know how to take the derivative and find the maximum of, okay? So uh, once you set it up from there, then it's just straightforward. You're going through finding you know, the first derivative that tells you where the critical points are using maybe the second derivative test or first derivative test to determine whether it's a maximum or minimum, and then maybe checking the endpoints if they're given. If there's no endpoints given, then I would, I would assume that the local min, local maxes are indeed the maximums of the problem that you're working on, okay?